This video discusses how to analyze data from an experiment performed to find the empirical formula of copper 2 sulfate. The first step in the experiment was finding the mass of an empty evaporating dish, which measured 25.1 grams. Approximately 4 grams of hydrated copper 2 sulfate, a blue crystalline powder, was added to an evaporating dish until the mass measured 29.2 grams. Heating a hydrate causes water in the crystal structure to convert to steam, which dries the salt sample. As copper 2 sulfate is heated, its color changes from a dark blue color to a much lighter color, as the sample dries due to the conversion of water to steam. The resulting material is called an anhydrous salt, or anhydrate, and takes on a powdery appearance. After heating, the combined mass of the anhydrous copper 2 sulfate and dish was 27.7 grams. Let's calculate some masses. The mass of the hydrate was determined to be 4.1 grams by finding the difference between the original sample in the evaporating dish, 29.2 grams, and the mass of the empty dish, 25.1 grams. The mass of the anhydrate was determined to be 2.6 grams by finding the difference between the ending sample mass in the dish, 27.7 grams, and the mass of the empty evaporating dish, 25.1 grams. This means that 1.5 grams of water was removed from the copper sulfate during the heating process. This was found by calculating the difference in masses of the hydrated and hydrous forms of the copper 2 sulfate. To determine the empirical formula, it's necessary to calculate the number of moles of copper 2 sulfate and the number of moles of water. The number of moles of copper 2 sulfate will be based on the mass of the anhydrous form of the salt. The mass of the dry copper 2 sulfate was 2.6 grams. This value is converted to moles by dividing by 159.61 grams, the molar mass of CuSO4. There were 0.0163 moles of copper sulfate in the original sample. The number of moles of water can be calculated by starting with the mass of water removed from the sample by the heating process, 1.5 grams, and dividing by 18.02 grams, the molar mass of water. There were 0.0832 moles of water removed from the hydrate. So how is empirical formula found? We apply conservation of matter and assume that the amount of CuSO4 present in the original hydrate sample is equal to the mass of the remaining CuSO4 after heating. We also assume that the mass of water present in the original hydrate is equal to the mass of the water driven off by the heating step of the experiment. Dividing the moles of anhydrous copper 2 sulfate and the moles of water by the smaller of the two values gives a whole number ratio. We calculate a ratio of 1 to 5.1, which agrees very well with the known empirical formula for this hydrate, which has a ratio of 1 to 5. So why is the experimental result off? The electronic balance used for this experiment has an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.1 grams. The experimental result is well within the range predicted, given this level of uncertainty in the mass measurement. In other words, if we ran the calculation using a mass of 1.45 grams of water, instead of 1.5, and a mass of 2.65 grams rather than 2.6 measured for the anhydrous copper sulfate, the ratio would have been calculated to be 1 to 4.8, which means that we can account for the difference by using only the uncertainty in the mass measurements. This result allows us to reasonably conclude that there were no other significant sources of error in the experiment. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and check out these additional videos I think you might find helpful in your chemistry studies.